A new era begins as Octagon MMA, Europe's best MMA show, is coming to the UK for the very first time. Octagon 48 will go down on November 4th at the world-renowned AO Arena in Manchester. Where UK fans will experience the electric atmosphere and heart-pounding action that Octagon MMA is known for across Europe and beyond. We will bring some of MMA's biggest names, plus a feature bout that puts two UK stars that nobody would expect to see inside the cage going head-to-head -head after 10 months of vigorous training. One of the UK's best comedians will take on reality TV superstar Jake Quickenden. This is the fight that many people have had their eyes on. You will see UK MMA's rising star, Liverpool's Shem Rock. And one of the most well-known, most dangerous. This phenom has already racked up eight victories before the time limit, with seven of them in the very first round. And the cherry on top will be the grand finale of the MMA reality TV show, Octagon Challenge, England versus Ireland. After two months of the TV show, at this night in Manchester, the Octagon Challenge champion will be crowned. That's it! Great Britain, Octagon MMA is coming. November 4th at the AO Arena in Manchester. Na turnaji Octagon 42 se vůbec poprvé představí vycházející hvězda britského MMA Shem Rock. I'm gonna go on to be the biggest thing and Octagon is the platform for me to showcase what I can do. 29-letý rok má na svém kontě 8 vítězství, jedinou porážku a velmi zajímavý styl, ve kterém preferuje brazilské jiu-jitsu. Svých šest soupeřů dokázal utáhnout před limitem a k tomu přidal dvě KO, což znamená, že zatím všechny své soupeře dokázal porazit před vypršením času. Jeho soupeřem na turnaji v Bratislavě bude brazilec Artur Lima, který ze svých 12 zápasů 10 dokázal vyhrát. Představil se i v americké organizaci LFA a také ACB, kde dokázal zvítězit jedním ze svých sedmi ukončení před limitem pomocí submise. Všem rok, který se může stát nejen evropskou hvězdou a také velkou hvězdou Octagonu, poprvé nastupuje na turnaj Octagon 42. So here we go. One of the most anticipated fights on the card, and this man is looking to upset the arrival of Shemrock. His name is Arthur Lima, the Night King. He's already competed here in Bratislava. In fact, that was his last fight, Luke. He claimed a victory here using that jiu-jitsu. He has a record of 10 wins. Seven of those are by submission. And he is somebody who has said, look, everyone's got that looking at Shemrock. Everybody is thinking this is going to be The, the story of the night, the man that has been on the run for 10 years, coming in here, finishing a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He said, but I've got the answers to the problems he possesses. I can finish him, I can submit him. He said, Shem, I'm not just here to beat you, I want to break your bones and steal that light. And it's an incredible thing to be happening here when you see such a rising star like Shem Rock taking on challenges of this nature, of this level, you know. Arthur Lima is an extremely dangerous man. Outweighs Shemrock as well quite. You can see the weigh-ins quite distinctively. He's the bigger man out of the two. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, which is where Shemrock shines, has seven finishes, I believe, uh, by submission. So he's very dangerous on the mat himself. He's taller than Shemrock, has everything in his favor. You know, there really isn't anything that you would see on paper that has Shemrock as a winner. So it comes just down to attitude and self-belief at this stage. Uh, 
when this fight was announced as well. It, it was supposed to be Shemrock's debut against Yaku Banik, a fighter that you know particularly well. He's fought one of your guys before, and, and he's predominantly known as a dangerous striker, somebody, one of the hardest hitters in the featherweight division, in the lightweight division, I should say. But this guy is a completely different problem. This guy is aggressive with his strikes, but it's not where he goes to. You look at the tattoo on his back. He wants this on the mat exactly like Shemrock was it on the mat. And he will bet on his jiu-jitsu against any man in the world. So the other side of this fight is Shemrock's been preparing for somebody who we know is a hard hitter, uh, a, a striker, somebody who want to keep it on the feet. He's had to, in the last five days, change what he needs to do or who he needs to fight. Because this guy, this guy is the polar opposite. Well, we saw it in the BT. It doesn't matter who's in front of me. I don't see a man anymore. I just see myself when I have to win. So Shemrock really needs to stay true to those words as he comes out here to make his debut. But now Arthur Lima embraces the crowd as he steps into the Oxygen cage for the first time in his career. Now we welcome the one, the only Liverpool fighter Shemrock. What a journey this man has been on. Was involved at a young age in a life of crime, then got accused of a crime that he did not commit. Chose to run, chose to go on the run, and was on the run for 10 years, away from his friends, away from his family. But when you talk to him, he says, I don't regret that. I embrace it because that gave me this journey while I was on the run. I walked into a jiu-jitsu gym in Malaysia and I, I thought, I'll be great here. I'll be able to smash everyone. I'm young, I'm athletic, I'm strong. The, the guys, the girls, they're all smaller than me. He got wrapped up like a pretzel. And what he learned then was, I need to know how to do this. I need to know how to become this man. I had a very similar story myself. In the jiu-jitsu realms, when I stepped into the Tsunami gym back in the day and faced a man called Robbie Olivier, who's a featherweight, a, a very, very small, short featherweight, he wrapped me up, and I had that same feeling. I have to understand this sport, I have to understand, I can't walk the streets as a man and, and feel this way. And Shemrock doing the same and becoming formidable at it in jiu-jitsu. And what I'd say about Shemrock, we can talk about his stats, we can talk about his game, we can talk about you know, that his fighting ability, and like we say, for me, Lima's the bigger man, he's the taller man, has a bit more experience, has a black belt on the ground, but does not have the presence that this man possesses. There is something about him, there is something about Shamrock that has that X factor. And we just had, you know, we just had one of the owners come over and look at his arm as if he was getting goosebumps from the walkout <laughs> coming out here, because he possesses something special. But now he needs to, really put that forward here. He really needs to convert that special X Factor into an amazing moment here at Octagon MMA. Well, they're both inside the cage. Here is the tail of the tape. Two years the younger is Arthur Lima taking on Shemrock. Shem will have a slight height and reach advantage, and he is a firm favorite in the eyes of the tip spot odds. It is about, we have all been talking about, it is about, that is, on the verge of happening to make it happen, and we need the man with the mic, Andre Nogueira. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is a lightweight bout. Three five-minute rounds, and the referee in the charge is Jan Wobornik. Let me introduce you, both fighters, and we will start in the blue corner. He's 27 years old, stands 187 centimeter tall, weighting at 70.6 kilo. Represent Pitbull Brothers, and a coach in his corner is Vinicius Teixeira. He has a professional record of 13 fights, 10 wins, 7 submissions, 1 draw and 2 losses. Fighting out of Brazil, Arthur Lavison de Jesus Lima. In the red corner, 29 years old, 183 centimeters tall, 70.9 kilos. Represent next generation. The coaches in this corner are Paul Rimmer, Alice Hampson, and Michael Patrick. He has a professional record of nine fights, 
eight wins, eight finishes, and only one loss. Representing Neruda Cup team, fit for you, and fighting out of United Kingdom. In the red corner, Shakim Shamrock. Guys, you know this game. Go hard for win, but always fair. If you want to touch gloves, do that and step back to your corner. Best of luck for both of you. There we go. Final instructions from Jan Verbornik. This is set to get underway in the blue corner. The Night King, Arthur Lima. White trunks, blue tape, Ready, taking on Shamrock. Shamrock, the fighting pride of Liverpool. Black shorts, red corner. Oh, he's been dropped early. Lima came forward with the jab. Now Shem looking for the takedown. Very aggressive start from Lima, lands that jab and stumbles Shemrock, but kind of activates him here as he comes into the clinching position. Oh, Manages nice. to get the takedown. Beautiful outside looking for that back. He cannot get it because of the whizzer from Lima. Yeah, Shemrock got a nice taste of the power early. We did talk about Lima. He said, look, I'm super aggressive. He's going to take this on short notice, but this first five minutes is where he's going to be most dangerous. Look. Definitely. You see the size as well of Lima. Would have cut a lot of weight to make it down to this division. He's very, very big for the weight, and we can feel that early with that jab. Shemrock now, though, muscling him up against the fence. You can see the frame of Shemrock. Long, uses leverage very well, but he's not exactly thick set in the same way that Lima is. But, you know, converting that here into control. And uh, when I talked to his coach, Paul Rimmer, from Next Generation, they said there's certain things that Shemrock does extremely... Oh, he's got to watch for the flying triangle. He's got to watch for the flying triangle. And manages to climb Lee. the legs up oh, here. He's locked. This should be huge. And this Lima should be huge. He's very oh. close with this. This is tight. Lima looking to get the flying triangle finish here against Shemrock. Well, oh, this would be one hell of a finish. What a way to upset the crowd. Somehow, Shem staying in this. This is extremely tight. Has the leg wrapped as well. Posture is broken of Shemrock here as Lima tries to upset the crowd and up. Oh my goodness. He took the flying triangle risks. Now he's trying to lock it up. He's biting down on that head. Shem Managing trying to, to survive. Out the back door here. How? Shem oh my goodness. He's trying to get his head out of there. Trying to get some blood back to his brain. The arm's in trouble now. The, arm the arm's in trouble. Over. Oh my goodness, Lima. Oh, Shemrock is out. He is out. Managing to survive. He's tempted to take the back now. Managing to survive that extremely deep flying triangle attempt from Lima, but now Lima on guys? top. We're in the butterfly guard here for Shamrock. But Shem, you saw him take breaths. That wasn't just oxygen going back to his brain, but blood as well, right? How he survived that for so long. That arm was in trouble as well, but now and in the top stepped over. He did everything correct, was calm, has been in that position before, like we said. You know, a bit of a phenom on the ground. Oh, the show big shots, big getting, shots from Lima. Getting dominated at the beginning of this fight. Lima in complete control on the feet. Big elbow here as well. All the questions coming from Lima. We said the first five minutes was going to be tough. I don't think we realised it was going to be this tough. I don't think Shem realised as well. Listen, on paper as well, and I watched back some of Lima's fights. He does those crafty things. He is a legit black belt. And, and somebody... manages to stay on top here as well, right round the full body. Oh, Shem might give his back up here. Yeah, gets hold of that arm with both hands, kind of Dagestani handcuff style, reaching round, could maybe utilise this to step over, take the back. Two minutes left in round number one. Manages to get back to his feet, though. Great resilience being shown at the moment. Oh, and again, look for the takedown, Shem trying to stay on his feet. Looks super strong, Lima. Yeah, they almost look like they're in two different weight classes to me. But now manages to break away. Oh, he dips into dip, dip, dip that knee, dips into it. Gets the takedown now, top position, 1 minute 35 seconds. Yeah, can maybe take a breath now, can Shemrock in, in, in the dominant position on top. But those elbows straight away coming from Lima. He is non-stop aggressive here. Oh, hammer fist from Shemrock on top, now trying to pass that guard. Yeah, great hips from Shemrock as he now oh, can try and look to be the gap of the knee bar. bar. Yeah. Again, another wily attack here from the Brazilian Shem. Got to get that knee past. Paul Rimmer screaming for him to go round the other way. There he's out. Knee bar, manages to get the knee out, though, can float round to the top oh. position. Does so for the 
Jiu-Jitsu black belt non-stop. What a fight. You just saw Shem look to his corner there. Yeah, I almost take a bit of a sigh and a deep breath, like, oh, this guy's non-stop. He won't give me an up a chance. And still, right in the back, here is Lima. Feel like Lima's got a point to prove here. He said it, he said everyone's staring at Shem. Everyone's expecting Shem to come here and walk through me. He is putting on a display here of exactly how much he wants this victory. The extreme dominance thus far from Arthur Lima. Oh, now he passes. Is it mount? Goes to the full mount position. Mount. Hammer fist coming out, 25 seconds. The corner, yeah, you can hear the corner. Ellis Hampton there letting Shemrock know exactly how long is left on the clock. And they need to get him back for this, right? They need him into that corner so they can give him some advice. Yeah, we're in the final 10 seconds here. Lima maybe going to switch up for an armbar or a triangle attempt to try and finish this off. But a very dominant round, almost a 10-8 from Lima in this first round. He said he was going to come out strong. He did exactly that. Dropped him with the first punch that he threw. And ever since then was relentless. And to be honest, doesn't look that tired. Not making deep breaths. Looks very calm. But listen, let's, let's talk about that triangle because it, it, it was so deep. The flying triangle was the attack. He set it up, he locked it up. He then attacked the arm. The heart of Shemrock was on display. The fact that he did not, did not give in to that, came out. But he was then chasing his breath and the fight ever since that moment. I think his heart's going to be tested again in this fight. Lima looks extremely confident now in this corner. Looks very calm after putting on an extremely beautiful display in that first round. Extremely aggressive. We see here from the first punch that he lands, drops and rocks. Yeah, and this is setting up the triangle. Look at that beautiful Flying, stuff. jumping triangle attempt here up against the fence. Manages to climb the legs up. Oh. Gets in super deep, looks for the arm. Great work from Shemrock stepping over to defend himself. And somehow escapes and comes out. But then it was relentless from then onwards. Nice elbow here from Lima. And the only question for me of Lima at the size and the skill level he has is his cardio. But he looks looks like it's the first round for him now. As I look yeah, well, at well, listen, there's what, calm. when you finish a fight or a round like that, that I mean, your lungs fill up again, right? You're, you're, angry, you're hungry to get back in there. But in that break, you saw Paul Rimmey, you saw Ellis Hampton from Next Gen, the coaches of Shemrock. Give him that advice, look to try and re light that fire in that man well he's got earned the respect of lima here early in this second round because at the moment lima has none for him he walked through him in that round and hits him a good with a nice left hook there as well oh, again looking for take the takedown manages to get him against reverse the oh this is a scramble now stays good on work. top good work there from shemrock this is what we more expect with the, tr the jiu jitsu on the bottom from lima is very very you know, very, very strong and also very intelligent. You can see he has the half butterfly here, controlling one arm. He's aggressive from the bottom, has leg lock attempts. You know, it can do can do it all as he comes here to the Sean Williams guard. He's very, very, you know, diverse, has great diversification in the ground game. Yeah, constant threats. Diversity was the word I was looking for, Brian, but I, I went <laughs> for diversification. I wasn't going to call you up on that, mate. <laughs> but there we go, now Shem, he, he got the takedown. Yeah, but his posture's getting controlled here. Yeah. But he moved this man to the cage, now he needs to work from there. Yeah, it does well. Oh, an emotional corner there from the, uh, the next gen lot. Oh, he's got to watch the arm as well. The hips on Lima, so good. He's trying to work for the arm bar. Look at that, that left leg, that right leg. So he's trying to come up and around the head. Nice little elbow there being called for by the corner as well. Shem needs to be careful he doesn't open up too much, doesn't give away a triangle attempt. I think, man, he's still recovering from that first round. Manages to get some distance now and get some, some space to try and now open up the guard and look to submit from the bottom, does Lima, as he's got hold of that arm. Again, looking for a triangle, feel like it could be one of his favorite submissions. Three minutes, the referee calling for a bit more action. And Shem's got to use this position, right? He can't give this up now. Yeah, and the corner also asking for more action as well, more posture, get his head high. That will help him avoid the triangle attempts as he tries to duck under the deep half oh, and look for the leg, leg lock. Again, from every position, Lima is a threat. And he gets the frame, Lima. This is dangerous now. Oh, he's goes all the way around oh, to that knee bar. Oh, this is tight. my goodness. Shem's got his knee out, though. No, he now he's his back head, in. He readjusts. Look at that, he pushed his hips back. 
That's well high on the knee. That's going to be very difficult. Shem's got the yes, he's done right. He's had to turn and bend that knee. Good work and well recognized by the crowd. And that almost seems like a bit of a break in spirit, though, from Lima as he failed on that. Another attempt needs to watch the up kicks. Great hips from Shemrock. A nice right hand. He's getting himself back into this fight. He's making it ugly. Yeah, I feel that now made made a difference. Made it maybe starting to fade away is Lima from these leg lock attempts, having no success. And you can see almost like the confidence within him dwindling now as the top pressure and these shots coming in from Shemrock. One minute 50 seconds left. What a fight this has been. Again, the hype trainer is Shemrock. Came in here, embraced by the crowds, but Lima looking to upset the party. But now Shem, with that takedown, has managed to keep this top spot. Here for the entirety since, has, has had to deal with a few problems. Now trying to pass these legs. But once he passes the legs, has to deal with the arms, has to deal with him going under, inverting, looking for the leg locks. It's almost easier just being in front of him. Oh, look at that. Again, Again working, but look at that. Now he's got the heel hook position. You've got to watch for the bite on the heel. Yeah, puts his foot flat on the mat, though, does. Shemrock makes the right decisions. Very calm here. And right in his corner as well is Lima. Oh, Shem might look to take the back. This is his favorite spot. Looks for the rear naked choke. Needs to set those hooks, but Lima Maybe aware of it. Passes now, looks to pass. Nice cross grip. Oh, now nice he's got the back. Up. Now gets what, one hook in. Has cross body now, could maybe roll over. 50 seconds, Luke, 50 seconds. Trying to pull that arm free. A good spot here now for Shem. Again, Lima rolls, again looking to attack those legs. They're yeah, doing anything just to give up, his, make sure he doesn't give up his back, I feel like. Every time I look into the cage, it's like I see a young Vinny Magalish, if you know who Vinny is. Yeah, yeah. Resembles him so much in the face, does Lima. Yeah. On the crowd, now getting behind this fight. 20 seconds left around number two. <laughs> Shem talking to him, <laughs> me there going, tapped him saying, good job, buddy, or something like that. <laughs> and then you can feel it's swerved, it's switched, yeah. you know, the, the, the momentum that Lima had has definitely died now, and Lima struggling in this second round as Shemrock takes control. Had <laughs> to weather a hell of a storm in that oh, first round. And even the knee bar attempt here in the second. Third round, all to play for, Luke. Yeah, and even here, Shemrock in front of us, a little bit phased, wobbly, a little bit tired. It, it all comes down to that takedown attempt. He's got to get that takedown in this third round. And again, you look at the corner there, Paul Rimmer right in the face there. They know what the job is now, they know what they've got to do. But there's still the problem over there, Lima, what a performance he has put in here on his debut as well. Ellis Hampton there. Such a good connection with his fighters since he's moved into coaching. Five minutes, Luke. Five minutes. And here's the takedown, Luke. Just talk us through these positions. And again, it was great from Shem. There was a little scramble here, but it reacted extremely well to keep that top spot. This is what it was all about. Man managing to get that top spot was, was the whole clinical part of the fight. Did it very well. Had to battle through the reversal. Did it go on top. And then we had this like mid position for quite a while. But then he managed to settle in. Round definitely in the corner of Shemrock. First round could be a 10-8 in the corner of Lima. Oh, so my I would goodness. say for Shemrock, he needs to look to try and finish in this third and final round. Oh, Shem calling for the cuddle. Nice respect between the two. There were some words before the fight, but now we have five minutes to decide this one. Who will it be? Will Shemrock make a victorious debut or Arthur Lima? Step in here and upset the party. Another great entry, great takedown from Shem. Yeah, we knew that takedown was coming, but it came very, very quickly, very early on now. Not even 20 seconds gone, and Shemrock has got it to the mat as he wants. Let's see if he can, bit by bit, break down Lima. As I said, that first round definitely could be a 10-8. So even here, if Shemrock manages to convert it into a victory in the, the third, he wins the second draw, and he wins yeah. the third, it could be a draw still. So he does need to hunt for this finish. And Shemrock, that is what he is. He is a finisher. You look at that record. Eight wins, eight by finish, two knockouts, six submissions. But seven in the corner of Lima on the ground as well. Yeah, so yeah, very, yeah. very dangerous. You know, he can't just... And the legs, he's attacked the legs continuously of Shem. Yeah, I feel like Shem's got an answer for every single one of those leg attacks, but if they do come off, they're extremely dangerous. 
you, you know, the triangle in the first round, if that was a knee bar or if that was a toe hold it, it, it can, or a heel hook, it could be, you know, career threatening. So he needs to be very, very careful, he doesn't leave himself in those positions as he oh, passes, passes here. Look at the way he did it. He opened those legs up brilliantly with excellent technique. Yeah. Uses the instep to pass, does well in the side control position now. Has good shoulder position, good pressure oh. as he's trying to test the mount. Looking to go knee on belly, maybe could go to the back. He might take well. the back here. This Dark is his favorite spot well. to work. Yeah, maybe passes over again. Knee slice again. I just feel like Lima's mentality has changed. He, he seems a little bit broken to me, he doesn't seem as hungry, doesn't seem as confident as he was in that first round. And the crowd, once again, they're enjoying this fight. And again, with Octagon fans, the grappling, they understand it so well. And they recognize the level that these two are putting on as far as MMA grappling, jiu-jitsu. Swipe the legs coming from the corner of Shamrock. Needs to be careful of this up kick. Oh, and again, they're firing up those heels, those dangerous heels. Shem now burying himself inward. Oh, big elbows from the bottom as well from Lima. Two minutes, 35 seconds left. Goes to the body. Hasn't been able to get anywhere near the back yet. Has Lima stuck in this guard. High guard now as well. Needs to be careful of these armbar attempts that could come as he's overexerting and reaching forward. But the takedown, Luke, let's go back to that in the first 20 seconds. Full commitment, excellent technique. Turned the corner, got it to the mat. And he needs to do that, Sherman. This is giving him this spot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you see from the significant strikes on the bottom, Lima. High with 46, 47 strikes, only 19 to 20 in Shamrock's favor, but that mainly would have been in that first round. Oh, again, again look at the high, high guard. guard. Constant threats from Lima, even off his back. 40, 1 minute 40 seconds. Oh, the hook kick, ooh, just misses. They're constantly attacking from the bottom, is Lima, and Shamrock not really attacking from the top, not really causing any damage. Now a little bit more. Oh, look at that, looking for the sweep. Nice attempt, good head kick again. Needs to be careful he doesn't fall into a triangle. Keeps falling into these elbows. For me, Lima's doing more damage on the ground. Lima's the one, you know, hurting Rock in these positions. Oh, Rock got, seems to be bleeding from his head as well from those elbows. Just on the scalp. Need to see some urgency from Rock to, to pass this guard. It's too dangerous for him. He keep continually getting up, getting down, getting up, getting down, getting up, kicked in the face, getting down, getting elbow. It needs to be a change of rhythm here. 55 seconds now left in this round. Three back and forth rounds. It's been the first round where Shemrock caught with that flying triangle, then the armbar survived that. Had to withstand a lot of pressure in that. Came back in the second round. For me, this round, this round, although we've had Rock on top entirely, this is a very close third round because he's not done anything that convincing. And, you know, Lima constantly attacking, getting the high guard, looking for something, going for the up kicks, landing the elbows. There's another big shot from the bottom as well. And in the modern day scoring system, it's not about position, it's not about being on top. It's, not, it's about effective striking and damage. You know? Final seconds coming in now, final 15. Both playing to the crowd a little bit, but there's still a job to be done here. And again, attacking the leg here is Lima. Yeah, last 10 seconds. Some and avoided fight, passes. Some fight. Constant between these pace two. between these two. Constant pace. And, and the story of the first round, how we managed to survive that triangle choke. What a fight between these two men. Really? Really? What a fight between the two. And the flying triangle, ironically, is one of the, the submissions that is well known from Next Gen. That the likes of Paddy Pimp has got some famous ones on his record. But uh, an extremely tough test for Shemrock. We said he's got the character, he's got the presence. Can he deliver? You know, he took on a guy in Lima here that we see after Lima. He said, I'm coming to upset the buy. And he gave everything to do that in the first round. For me, the judges have an extremely tough test in this one yeah both fighters neither really celebrating Shemrock kind of put his hands up but it's so close right and you said it that at first round could be 10-8 that's not what we know it's what you're kind of saying just because of the damage and the submission attempt and how deep it was for how long it was 
So we could still be looking at a draw, right? Exactly that. I mean, depends on how the judges score it. But here we see a little bit of action from that third round. And even that third round could be scored in the corner of Lima because the consistency of damage from the bottom, constant elbows and punches. We see here in the stats, when you look at the stats, the only thing in the, in the favor of Shemrock is the takedowns. And everything else goes to Lima. I mean, we could be seeing a win for Lima here as well. It's real tough for these judges. What a fight this was, what a story this is as well. Lima showing incredible talent and Rock showing incredible heart. Who knows how this one's been scored? One man knows. And he enters the cage now, Mr. Andre Naboni. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, let's see how the judges score this fight. First judge, 28-28. Second judge, 29-28, Lima. And third judge, 28-28. It's a majority draw. Listen, I'll grab a word with both of you. Quick words. Arthur Lima, first of all. A new translator. The translator. I'll grab you a word in one second, brother. A super close fight, in particular the flying triangle attempt at the, in the first round. Were you surprised that Shemrock was able to survive that? Yes, yes. Uh, my opponent is very good. Fire. Yes. And uh, when it was announced, are you happy with the draw? Do you think you did enough to get the victory? I need other opportunities. I can show you if I have time to prepare. This Arthur needs for another opportunity. There we go, Arthur Lima. Thank you so much. Give it one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Arthur Lima! Shem Rock, a tough fight. He stepped in on short notice. In particular, the flying triangle attempt was so deep. Just talk us through that. How, how deep was it and the armbar as well? Um, first of all, thank you everyone who supported me. Second of all, scouts, not English. But yeah, um, you, you don't submit me. You break me arm or you put me to sleep. I'm not tapping for anyone. I'm better than the performance I've showed tonight. Um, I want to run this one back with Arthur. Um, Arthur did take this on seven days' notice. All respect to him. But I was preparing for a completely different fighter. I dislocated my ribs in the camp. I couldn't train for six weeks. But I weren't pulling out for no one. Jakob Bannock's a pussy because he didn't show up. Arthur is a fucking warrior. He come on seven days' notice to a country where he don't know no one, and he showed up like a boss. I got respect for him, but there's no way you can't give me two rounds of that fight. Okay, it weren't my greatest performance in my career, but I want to run that back with him, because I feel like that weren't a draw, that weren't a loss. Listen, that was your debut. I would love to see that run back. Shemrock, Scouse Shemrock, welcome to Octagon. We'll see you soon. Up the Irish. Yup. Ladies and gentlemen, Shem Rock. A new era begins as Octagon MMA, Europe's best MMA show, is coming to the UK for the very first time. Octagon 48 will go down on November 4th at the world-renowned AO Arena in Manchester. 
where UK fans will experience the electric atmosphere and heart-pounding action that Octagon MMA is known for across Europe and beyond. We will bring some of MMA's biggest names, plus a feature bout that puts two UK stars that nobody would expect to see inside the cage going head-to-head -head after 10 months of vigorous training. One of the UK's best comedians will take on reality TV superstar Jake Quickenden. This the fight that many people have had their eyes on. You will see UK MMA's rising star, Liverpool's Shenron. And one of the most well-known, most dangerous. This phenom has already racked up eight victories before the time limit, with seven of them in the very first round. And the cherry on top will be the grand finale of the MMA reality TV show, Octagon Challenge, England versus Ireland. After two months of the TV show, at this night in Manchester, the Octagon Challenge champion will be crowned. That's it! Great Britain, Octagon MMA is coming. November 4th at the AO Arena in Manchester.